What's up, everyone? Welcome back to On the Line. It's Tuesday, June 20th, and I'm Corey Mall here with my awesome co-host, Olivia Ekbenay, Ashley Titians. We're back after a wild weekend of national championships. We are going to review all of them on today's show. We'll discuss the top storylines heading into the Bermuda Track Challenge, where these two are going to be headed off to. And then we will conclude with a discussion around the top three high school boys track and field athletes of all time. It's going to get juicy. Stay tuned for that and more. All right, we're going to move on to our next topic, and that is New Balance Nationals Outdoor. This weekend in Philadelphia, Franklin Field, it was outrageous. With over 7,000 athletes uh, in Philadelphia, it offered an exhilarating display of track and field action on the high school circuit. We couldn't possibly get to all of the storylines from this meet, but we're going to bottle up some of our favorites. And Olivia, I'll toss it to you first. What what first stood out to you? Oh my goodness, this was such a jam-packed weekend of track and field, as you mentioned, Corey. Three national meets happened all in one weekend from all different parts of the country. But let's focus on New Balance National Outdoors. And I feel like the biggest takeaway is it doesn't matter where you are ranked in the nation. What matters is what you put out in the finals. It's an even playing field. And I feel like Camden Bentley of Ohio Speed taught me that over this weekend. This was one of the deepest fields we have ever seen this season. Every single girl that was lined up in that final was ranked in the top 40 in the nation. Coming from U.S. number two, you had um, a a best of 1318 and then also ranging to 1387. So the fact that there was pretty much a seven to six tenths of a difference, like it could have been anybody's race. And in the qualifying rounds, Camden actually broke the meet record in the 1344, which was set last year uh, by Jasmine Harmon. And Camden just went out and went 13:36 to set the tone for the final. And then just looking on on paper, like Macaria Harris was in that race literally to Camden's left. She's the one that clocked a 13:18 from the Texas Relays. Then you had Camden, who was the second fastest going in with a 13:27, and then two lanes over was Myla Green from Bullis, who ran a 13:28 that season. So it, we knew it was going to come down to the wire. But the fact that Camden actually started a little bit behind in that race, and it wasn't towards, it was happening towards the middle, maybe that seventh hurdle. That all of a sudden you just see Camden take control of the race, and she took down a loaded field and won the title in a 13:41. Myla went 13.63, and Olivia Powell was able to sneak in there for third with a 13.65. So, you know, I think the biggest takeaway just coming from New Balance is it does not matter what your times were going into that final. It's how you show up in that final race. How big of a surprise was it? For, you to, for her to win that? For me personally, I think it kind of caught me off guard because just looking on paper, like you had Macaria Harris, who has been running extremely well from Louisiana in that race. You also had Myla, who's been just trying to get through those rounds. So personally, I wasn't putting Camden in that first place position. I had her in the top three. I was kind of expecting Macaria because she was leading that race uh, for certain parts of it. But I'm really proud of how Camden just like literally focused on her lane, focused on the hurdles in front of her and came away with the victory. Ashley, let's move it over to you. Well, I think one of the most dominant performances from New Balance had to be from one school in particular, and that was Bulla School out in Maryland. And in the girls' relays, I mean, Olivia and I were watching the stream and kind of, you know, covering the meet remotely. Like, it was insane to watch what Bulla School did over the weekend at Franklin Field. They won the 4x100 meter relay, the 4x2, the 4x4, the shuttle hurdle relay, the 800 meter SMR, and then the 1000 meter SMR for a total of six relay titles, which guys, like, that's just unheard of. Like, Bullis was all over the track, and they, they didn't just win these events, they, they won them in commanding fashion, too, as well. You know, and they got a slew of meet records, too, in a lot of those relays. But I think the most impressive performance had to be that U.S. number two all-time, 133.71, in that 4x200 meters. They beat their previous, They you know, originally they were a U.S. number three all-time behind a 134 flat performance at New Balance Nationals Outdoor last year in 2022. So they improve upon that mark, move up the all-time rankings, and overall bull school. I mean, they're always going to do super well at these national meets with, you know, stars like you know, Myla Green, Sydney Sutton, you know, Sage Hayden, all those that are very experienced. And so it wasn't much of a surprise to see Bullis dominate, but it was really cool to watch as well. Yeah, I think the larger conversation here is that Bullis isn't built for state championships. It's built for national championships. 
Can you speak a little bit more to that? I mean, their ultimate objective isn't necessarily their private parochial school championships. It's, it's these national meets. Sure, yeah. I mean, like, it's, again, I think it's something you see every time we go to any national championship. Typically, it's New Balance, you know, outdoors and indoors. Like, we saw indoors this year in Boston. They did the same sort of thing where they were, again, dominating the relays. And even if you look, like, they have... You know, multiple teams entered too. Like I think in that four by four <laughs> to end the meet over the weekend, they had I think three teams in that final four hundred meter race, or at least two. Yeah, so two. I mean, they went one three too as well. Their B team got third place, and so again, it's not just building for these state championships, but to be able to put you know not just one relay team in a national race, but like two to three as well. Yeah, yeah, always good to see you from Bullis. Uh, on my side of things, I think it was maybe some surprise hits over the track. Tavon Underwood is is an athlete specifically that I think a lot of us have seen over the last few weeks from Meade High School in Colorado. Ran 45-8-2 in the 400 to beat Quincy Wilson of Bullis uh, and Micaiah Danzi and Zaire Naridin. And not necessarily a, a super surprise because he had done so well to finish his season in set the number one time at his Colorado State Championships. He went under 46 a couple of times. But this quote that he said after the meet kind of summarizes where he's at. He said, I've finally become the elite runner I've always wanted to be. And that that's interesting because Tavon, if you look at her recruiting rankings from even six months ago, probably isn't even on it, right? Um, or if he's on it, he's not near the top. But right now, he's done so much in the last few weeks of high school, he's become a different level of athlete. And that sometimes hits 18-year-old kids. Uh, you got to wait and wait and wait until you really find the best version of yourself. And in this race, from about 280 meters to 320, he literally turned it on, mm -hmm. made a move on Zaire, and did not look back. Quincy could not make up that difference, and that was a w wonderful race from Tavon. A couple other ones that I wanted to mention, Union Catholic – over Cuthbertson in the four by eight. That wow. was wild. They got beat earlier in the indoor season. Come back. They win this 847-08 to 848-16. Awesome job there. But then Cuthbertson in the DMR. Mm -hmm. 1133 over Saratoga Springs, who's dominated the DMR over the last two seasons. Uh, they ran 1137. What what do we think of, of Cuthbertson really quick in the DMR? That, that was a huge performance, that I, I want to say. We were just, I, like I mentioned, Ashley and I were doing this remotely, so we're over here just, like, messag messaging each other back and forth. But Cuthbertson, it was, like, <laughs> it was insane. It was North Carolina versus New York, and it was just, like, it came down to, you know, a lot of back and forth was happening, but that just shows that, like, Cuthbertson just really put everything out on the table. And I'm really just proud of both teams that really just really showcased their dominance this, this weekend. Again, too, I mean, they, they won the four-by-mile on Friday yeah. evening and then get second in the four-by-eight, but then still have enough energy to come back out <laughs> right. on the track run and win the DMR. And I think, I believe Charlotte Bell and Stella Kerbs and uh, Justin Justine Prisano also competed in some individual events as well on Saturday, I believe. So, I mean, they had a busy schedule, but they were able to still come out with a win there and a really great performance there at the end. Number mm -hmm. 10 all-time in the DMR. One last shout-out here goes out to Mary Bonner Dalton of Myers Park, who raced the two-mile at New Balance Nationals, finished fourth in 10.05.39, then came back to Charlotte on Sunday and raced the 1,600-meter leg of the DMR there in 13.1 and 12.08.99. So that's a pretty difficult back-to-back -back when – She's traveling, and then she's got a run in the heat in Greensboro. But uh, very, very good performance there. And I made the, the remark that Myers Park might be next year's Cuthbertson. I don't know if either interesting. of you agree, but all those four girls from that DMR are coming back next year. Whereas Cuthbertson's at least losing one, I think. or maybe Correct. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know. There, there could be something there. Let's move on, though, to Nike Outdoor Nationals and specifically the boys' Mile, I think everyone was watching this uh, <laughs> online, and it was a real clash of the titans in Eugene as we finally witnessed the greatest distance talents of 2023 go head to head in a rainy boys mile. This year's sub four guys, Simeon Birnbaum, Rocky Hansen, and Connor Burns, along with Lex and Leo Young, decided to duke it out uh, in their final race as high schoolers in Eugene, and it did not disappoint. Ashley, let's go to you first. <laughs> Well, that's right. It definitely did not disappoint. There was a lot going on the track there in the mile. And I think, 
you know, when you look at it, so, you know, what happened in this race is you see Simeon Birnbaum, who had already contested two events already this week. He won the two mile at Brooks. He competed in a professional 1500 at Nike Outdoor Nationals on Friday and took third there in that field. He still has enough energy to bounce back and win this mile title here at Nike in 402.22 in, you know, some rainy conditions as well. He takes down Leo Young, who was second in 402.58, Rocky Hansen, third, 403.63, and then rounding out the rest of the top five there was Connor Burns and Lex Young, who both clocked 404 there in that final. And, you know, when you're looking at this as a whole, like, I think, personally, this caps off, like, maybe, like, one of the greatest, like, five days of racing we've ever seen from a, like, high school distance athlete, I feel like. Because, you know, again, like I mentioned, he won Brooks PR two mile on Wednesday, and he didn't just win it, but he clocked a U.S. number two all-time 834.10. Then flash forward to Friday, and he clocks another U.S. number two all-time mark in the 15, and that was 337.93. And then gets that mile win on Sunday in 402.22, which I think that's just like, it's mind-blowing to me that he was able to recover so quickly between those races and not just, you know, win two of them and almost win another one, but like, you know, put down all-time efforts as well. And, you know, I think we also have to talk about the fact, too, that in that mile race on Sunday, like, Simeon, for probably, you know, at least half of that race looked like he was completely out of it. I mean, he was in the complete back of the pack, didn't look super great, but... Then in like full, you know, typical burn bomb fashion, he split like 55 seconds on that last lap, which fun fact there too, in every one of his races this past week, the two mile, the 15 and the mile, he split anywhere from 55 seconds to 57 seconds on his final lap. So that's just, that's just so impressive to me. Absolutely. And, you know, I think there is some conversation that uh, precedes the mile that I think we should get into a little bit. There was a little bit of pre-race banter uh you know just <laughs> mm -hmm. to say the least about it um connor and Simeon Simeon were on a press conference before nike outdoor nationals and um Simeon offered some thoughts on facing lex and leo for the first time connor went a little bit on top of that and said um it's no competition from them uh good for the sport or not for the sport that it's gotten to that level oh i mean like I, i'm kind of torn where it's like like, I don't mind some banter, but also don't do it at the expense of maybe putting down the others in your competition. You know what I mean? So I feel like it can be taken too far. And, you know, if everyone's kind of on the same joking page, like, okay, cool. But I think maybe you just have to be cautious of maybe some of the implications of what are said. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know how else you guys feel about this either. Olivia? I kind of agree with Ashley. I had mixed emotions about it. I feel like... Yes, like I love the the competition about it, but also make sure to do it in a respectful way amongst, you know, your peers and the athletes you're competing against too. That's just how I personally feel about the situation, but I completely agree with Ashley. Like, I don't think it's cool to like bring down other competitors on such a big platform like that to like verbally come out and say it, you know what I mean? So that's how I feel. But Corey, yeah. how do you, what are your thoughts on it, this? I think it's a... Um... To balance i think you yeah. have to, to to play here and you know watching kate flat last year obviously uh opened the eyes of a lot of people and and how um interviews can be and how you know energy can be infused within an interview now did we give him too much latitude last year with what he was saying probably because i think that maybe gives others incentive to, to then speak their own authentic self uh, yeah. in, in these interviews and I don't necessarily think it's a a great I think place for the sport when you mm -hmm. are offering unfiltered thoughts you know you can think that stuff but I mean again as you said putting down others you know at the expense of others is is not the way to treat the sport and I think if you're if you're keeping it internal right if you're if you're pumping yourself up you know, confidently within yourself. I think that's one thing, but it's another thing to sort of, you know, lay it out for other athletes when you guys are all high schoolers, right? Yeah. It's another thing if you're pros and you're 25 years old and you're throwing jabs at somebody who's, <laughs> that's their profession to make money, but, yeah. but you know, you're, yeah. you're in a different and place. I think too, like, 
have talked to some of the other athletes, you know, that have been currently competing, you know, in that distance space. And some of them have said, you know, I just want to let my running on the right. track do the talk. Yeah. I'm a much more, I'm a big fan of that. You know, like, I think that's sometimes like the best way to do it. Like, some, just leave it to the track. That's, yeah. that's what I'm going to say. But here's another thing I want to bring up about Cade Flat. I personally, from what I have seen and heard, I don't think he's mentioned any other competitors in the context of like, this individual is not competition to me. Like, what came out of Cade's flat mouth was, hey, I'm going for this record. I want to be the best of all time. And my thing is he backed up what he was doing. Like he kept knocking at the door of breaking this all-time national record in the 800, which I also think is kind of the difference. Like I'm for that. Like Cade flat, like what I feel, I feel like what he has done last year, I think is good because it was really, it was just like him kind of putting it out there. Like this is a goal that I am going for, but I don't think he's ever... I don't know. He called uh, he called Newberry Park like bananas last year. And oh, okay. He said he said other things. So that was <laughs> kind of treading the line there. We can end this, I, I think, but it's it's a good conversation to have. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, all these guys are going to mature and and learn from these situations. I think next year, and there there's some good to it. There's some bad to it that you have to learn from. Uh, all the guys have tremendous potential, and I mm -hmm. think they're going to have bright futures. We haven't even finished the discussion on the mile yet, Olivia. <laughs> no, we haven't. Do you have any thoughts here on the boys' mile? The only thing I would add, Ashley kind of t attests to it, but I'm just going to keep it simple. Five days, three races, two wins, two all-time performances. Simeon Birnbaum. Yeah. He, he is, yeah. I feel, the GOAT at this moment for distance running. He has just exceeded all expectations, and he's just, oh, I feel like, doing that, remarkable. That's a hot take. The GOAT? Yes. The greatest of all time? Simeon Birnbaum. Maybe. Oh, wow. Maybe. Goat. Wow. 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 wow Goat wow, emoji. Wow, wow. Okay. Yes. I will also Potential. add this very last thing. <laughs> um, I think Simeon's in 355 shape. Mm -hmm. And I Absolutely. think I think he looked at that race and he probably bet that it was going to be 402. So him going out uh, in last in the first lap, it was almost like playing the fiddle. <laughs> Y'all were freaking with out. The guys. I was like, don't but worry. <laughs> it's because he trusted himself because he yeah. knew the race was going to come back to them. Mm -hmm. I also feel like he isn't nervous in those situations. No, whereas no. a lot of guys use their, their, their instinct and their adrenaline really gets into it early on. And they maybe run, a, run differently than they, they anticipate. Simeon hasn't done that. Uh, he's so poised. And I think he, he ran the way that, he planned all along, and he just came back in a kick. Leo ran tremendously in that yeah. race. Mm -hmm. He never was in a bad position. He he made the move when he needed to, and he was in line to win. I cannot knock the guy. He ran incredibly well. Um, deserved to win, to be honest, um, before Simeon took it. Uh, but, you know, it was just a great mile. It was a great mile, great, great uh, drama throughout, and uh, definitely was the talk of, of Nike Outdoor Nationals. Mm -hmm. um, Olivia, let's move to you. We had Mia Bra Pedersen uh, doing some fantastic things as well. She's probably another storyline. Oh my goodness! Literally before this mile kicked off, Mia took the track in the girls' two hundred, and the fact that this young lady completely tore up the stagger the first hundred meters and literally slingshot off the turn in the front. From there, no one was able to stop her. Her fastest time going into the final was a twenty-two sixty-one. Sunday night, she went 22:43 with barely any wind, with a wind legal performance, which which ties her right now for U.S. number two all time. You guys, the only person that has run faster than her is Allison Felix, who went 22:11 to break the national high school record holder. And I have to give kudos to Sophia Beckman, who is another standout athlete. She goes to Oregon City. She's about to graduate. Finished second with a personal best of 22:99. This was her first time breaking 23. And her girl Jamisia Ford um, right. coming in third there, 23:24. So. A lot of great races from these ladies. I know we have a, a graphic of Mia's progression. I just want to put this up on the slide right now. But Mia has been a sprinter we have seen all season long and really has put out big marks. You can just see the consistency that this girl has had all seasons from running 2289 indoors, starting at 2301 as her debut, and then shaves nearly a second uh, half a second, excuse me, in just two months. And I know we talked about Allison records, uh, Allison Felix's record before as one to be 
you know, give or take more than likely not being broken. However, after this run that Mia just put together, I feel like there's a little bit more hope. I wouldn't say, like that 20 to 11 is ridiculous, but I feel like she just put herself in a whole new category going into her senior year in 2024. And I think we can just see something special from her. It was just remarkable. I need a really quick answer to this before oh, we move goodness. on. But okay. I do have a question for y'all. Um, the season is effectively over for us. We're not counting USA's or, or Pan Americans. Who is the Miles But 50 Boys Athlete of the Year? Right now, oh. no guarantee there. Okay. Asama Singa or Simeon Birnbaum? I would say Asama Singa. <laughs> there was Personally. a slight pause there. Well, okay. I, I No, go ahead, Ashley. No, no, no. I mean, like, I definitely think they've both done enough to show that they should be number one, but I think... If we didn't have Asama Singa, yes, it would be Simeon Birnbaum, but Asam broke, you know, national records. He's running, you know, almost 10 flat in the 100. Like, I, he's just been dominant, so I feel like you can't knock that. One national record outdoors in the 200. Yes. yes. Not the 100 yet. What Not the 100. Clo- that's why I said close. Close. Yeah. close. Um, mm-hmm. I would also have to go with Asama Singa, just the way how... He's just performed since the indoor season. I know we're focusing on outdoor, but like that just alluded to like what we were seeing, what we're currently seeing right now. He's just been putting in the work and now we're just seeing that fruit really just come blossoming into a full season for him. And I feel like he's just remarkable. Like 10.02 right now, win legal. And I believe I looked at his mouse split profile just yesterday. Three of his performances were under 10 seconds. And again, they were wind aided, but like, that is just remarkable, and he's just taken down every single competitor that's been in his way in the 100 and the 2, so I'd, I would have to go with Assam. Okay, two Assams for you. I put this question out on Twitter after Simeon ran that mile. I said the only question left answering is who's the athlete of the year. So far, 76 votes online. 64% of them have gone to a single. Simeon's gotten 35% of the vote, too. I think the the one thing I will say about Simeon is the versatility that he's shown, the range of events yep. that he's shown at the level of which he's running um, is really, really good. And I think there's a conversation with Simeon for sure with with what he's doing. He's had less opportunities to race pros than Assam, which also makes a difference. He's raced high schoolers nearly his entire you know, trajectory here in the senior season. So I think when it comes down to it, we're going to have a really hard conversation when it comes to male athlete of the year. Mm-hmm. Over in Greensboro, over 600 elite performances went down at Adidas Outdoor Nationals. And we even got a world age group record from a sixth grader. We're going to go into our top storylines from Adidas. Ashley, let's go to you first. Well, let's kick it off with some 800s because both the girls and the boys 800s at Adidas were phenomenal. We saw some really big PRs there, some great performances. Beginning first with the girls 800, where I think we may have seen one of our biggest breakout stars of the meet. And that's going to be... Oluwatisin Awolai, I hope I didn't butcher your name there, of South (laughs) Cobb in Georgia. She just, you know, obviously, Corey, you were there to see with your own eyes, but she just completely dominated that girl's 800. She clocked 206.15 for the win, which was a good PR for her there. She even split that race, too, which is phenomenal, which you don't see hardly ever in an 800 meter. So kudos to her there. And she improved upon her personal best of 207.43, which she set earlier this year, and she won by seven seconds. So... Kudos there to her and the girls. And then if you move on to the boys, too, we saw Michael Long and he of St. Sebastian Academy in Virginia clocked 150.10, almost breaks 150 there to get the win. His second sub-151 performance of the season for Long, and he won by two seconds. And, you know, I was looking at, you know, his progression since the indoor season. And when I looked at what he did during indoors, he competed at Adidas Indoor Nationals. Now, he ran the 800 meters there, too, and ran 154 there for second place. But it wasn't second in the championship division, but in the national elite division. So now, you know, come outdoor season, he's moved up to the fastest section and he's grabbing championship wins. So kudos to him. A really amazing fun fact about Mike Long is he is signed with Ava Maria. If you don't know who's coaching Ava Maria, it is uh, the Allen Webb. Oh, <laughs> right. so I love that. Alan Webb might get his first elite recruit here uh, down in Florida. It's going to be interesting what he can do with this athlete, but that is he's going to Ava Maria. Olivia, let's toss it to you. That's awesome. Well, I want to give a huge shout out to Major Impact from Georgia. They have completely dominated Adidas Outdoor Nationals. I want to focus on two individuals first, Melanie Doggett and Samto Igwu. 
remember their names because both of these girls competed in the national elite division in the 100 meters and Melanie as Corey mentioned uh, a sixth grader my goodness kicked off the first day of Adidas by sprinting a wind legal 1167 I wish I was there in person to see that race because that is remarkable. This leads the sixth grade class, you guys, by 1.22 seconds. And to put this into consideration, just based off our mile split database, she ran faster than Tamari There's Davis no at it. this age by a tenth of a second. So that, I think, speaks in. huge volumes there. And also, she ran the fastest recorded time by a middle school girl in the U.S. Um, and her and Tamari are also the only two girls who have dipped under 12 seconds for their age group. So that is absolutely remarkable. However, in the finals, she finished second to her teammate, Sam who went 1163 and again an eighth grader so that is just remarkable and that's the fourth fastest time in u.s history for her age another athlete another eighth grader sarah marshall won the 200 meters in the national elite title with a 2408 so whatever major impact is doing right now in georgia just continue doing it because they're just like these yeah. young talents are just doing so well right now and, and melanie grabbed the world age group record for yes. 12 years old too mm -hmm. um Awesome talking to them. Really cool uh, young girls. I think they, they all have bright futures. Uh, for me, I got a couple underrated performances that we haven't already mentioned in our recap uh, yesterday of, of the event. Mikhail Rose of FIA Track Club was your winner in the 100-meter hurdles in 13.68 seconds. He's chopped off probably about a half a second from his PR back on June 10th of 14.16, or at least a season best. 13.6 um, puts him at U.S. number 14 overall, and he was – stoked uh is putting it likely about the win he just went crazy had a lot of energy that's that's the good kind of energy love to see um next up mariana wright of more comprehensive track club out in virginia top sophomore in the country right now in the 400 meter hurdle she ran 58 8 1 which is moving uh absolutely moving top five in the country for 400 hurdles overall uh number 12 sophomore performance of all time and she also finished second in the 400 there at 55 8 so the correlation between 400 four meter hurdles is very obvious right uh so she's going to be someone to watch coming up jacob cookenham from bishop stang uh out there in the shot put cooked up something for us uh in the shot put earned a championship win 66 11 and a half that is his PR by 11 inches to win a championship. It, it came on his first throw, that 20.41 meter uh, heave came on his first throw. He won that in a big way. Interestingly enough, he's from Massachusetts. So he could have went to New Balance. He chose Adidas and uh, ended up proving worthwhile because he got a big PR there. And um, all the action of Adidas Outdoor Nationals is on the me page and on our site. We have race archives, uh, athlete interviews, photos, uh, articles, and more. So if you're into that, just go on our site and check it out. We're going to move to the Bermuda Track Challenge, which Ashley and Olivia will be covering live on site uh, coming up this weekend. It's set for Friday and Saturday in Bermuda, the triangle of sorts. Miles Split will be live <laughs> on site, and uh, some stars are going to be there, and Let's just get into this first. Olivia, what are your expectations? Yes. So the biggest storyline I think we're all looking forward to is we're going to see at this international meet, Sofia Rodriguez and her sister, Victoria, will take the big stage in Bermuda. And the sisters are both entered in the 800 and the 1500 meters as well. Sofia, we cannot stop talking about her, but she has broken records left and right, including her own 14-year-old world record in the two-mile, which she actually set at Nike Outdoor Nationals this past weekend with a 10-12-33. And in the 5K, she also ran a 16-22-30. Another athlete to kind of keep your eyes out for, I'm thinking about Ashley with this. She's a sophomore from Charlotte Christian out in North Carolina. She won the 100 and the 200-meter titles at the North Carolina State Championships. She's currently number one in the 100 and U.S. number 13 for the sophomore class in the 100 meters this season. And so she was actually at Adidas Track Nationals where she finished third with an 11.59 win data time, but she's entered in the 100 meters and the long jump. So it's going to be great to see what she can do there in Bermuda. 
Ashley, who's your stars to watch out for? Well, I'm going to take it to the field because we do have a star in the discus, I think, to look out for in Bermuda, and that's going to be Ch uh, Charles Bissonnette out of Riverside High School in South Carolina. He is the South Carolina 4A state champion, actually, in the discus. He's the top guy to be in the competition there. He has a PR of 183, which he set earlier this season. And to look to end his season on a high note. Now, he hasn't competed in a while. His last competition was back at those state championships in South Carolina in May, I believe. But, I mean, hey, it's, you know, the national stage in Bermuda. You know, well, I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, stay tuned for all the content. Uh, and social media, which these two are just going to be all on top of, I would <laughs> of course, assume. Of course, of uh, course. This weekend is going to be fun. All right. One last segment to finish out the show following last week's discussion on the top three high school girls athletes of all time. We're going to move it over to the boys now. Um, we should probably put a poll up on the site to see if anybody even agrees with us. Mm, we should. Um, we should. It'll be interesting. Now, who were your top three high school boys? Did I say girls? It was We did girls last we week. We did girls last Bo week. Boys this week. Who are your top three boys track and field athletes of all time and why? Let's start with Olivia. All right. So I did very similar – strategy with what I did with strategy. the girls. Yeah, okay. I had a strategy <laughs> last week. Um, when it came to the girls, I tried to be very well-rounded and think about who would be my top sprinter, my top distance runner, field event. So I want to kick things off with distance. I feel like we need to talk about Alan Webb because I feel like he is just talks of the talks um, as he holds the record pretty much um, that every distance boy is trying to strive for at the moment. He has gone sub, you know, to go from a sub four minute mile, Alan Webb's record was a 353 in 2001 at the Prefontaine Classic. Alan Webb, Jim Ryan, and uh, Colin Salmon are the only three boys to break 357 in history at this distance. So I feel like Alan Webb, everyone has been talking about him even now that they're trying to strive for this record. So I feel like this guy has just put out the mark that everyone is striving for, therefore, you are the best. Now, for the field event, I feel like we will probably all agree with this one. My Michael Carter, he owns the oldest standing national high school record, which was set back in June of 1979. He threw 81 three, three and a half inches in the shot put, and no one is touching that record anytime soon. No one has thrown over 50, 80 feet in high school history besides this man, and the next best throw was back in 1990 when Brent Noon threw 76 feet two inches. So I feel like Michael Carter has been the best guy to ever do it in the shot put. And now for the sprint side, I felt like – I had to bring Asama Singa from Mountain Bird Academy into this conversation. I did similar last week with, I think I picked Shanti, but yeah. Isam has just made history in his absolute final season as an Eagle. He ties the indoor 60-meter national record with a 657. He breaks the indoor record to a 20.48. Outdoors, he becomes the first high school boy to break 20 seconds in the 200 meters as a high schooler, which previously was held by Noah Lyles. Assam has also went 19... 97 ridiculous he has wind aided times sub 10 seconds in the 100 with a 986 983 and 989 and he has the fastest win legal mark this season of 1002 and then he also went 1005 at new balance national outdoors to just show his consistency his domination in the sprint so sama singa is my top guy for the sprint so those are my my three boys all time hall of famers however you want to call it with mile split olivia's pick all right Ashley, let's move to your picks. <laughs> All right, so kicking it off, I, I think Olivia kind of alluded to this already, but <laughs> Michael Carter obviously has to be on this list. Like, over 80 feet, over 81 feet, like, that's just insane. Like, I can't it, – it's unfathomable almost that a <laughs> high schooler did this with a glide, too, even, not even – you know, like, that's just insane. So Michael Carter – no one's ever going to come close to that record. Shoot, we haven't even seen many 70-foot-plus throws in history. So, you know, I think that right there makes Carter an all-timer. There's really not much else to say about that. I think Olivia put it perfectly. <laughs> now, I'm going to shift a little bit here, and I think this kind of puts him in the same category as Michael Carter as someone who put down marks that probably will never be touched, and that has to be Mondo Duplantis. You know, like, you know, again, he did things in the sport that we probably will never see again at the U.S. high school level. You know, the world pole vault record holder, he went to Lafayette High School in Louisiana, and, you know, he would end up vaulting a historic best of 19.55 at the Louisiana Outdoor State Meet, which 
imagine seeing a high schooler like vault that high. Like I can't even <laughs> think of that. Like in person, can't even. You know, it's unfathomable. Again, no one else has come close to vaulting 19 feet, let alone you know 19.55. The closest one next on the list that's going to be Casey Lightfoot. He's gone 18.5 outdoors, and only 10 other guys other than Mondo have gone at least 18 feet in the pole vault in U.S. high school history. So he was come on, you know, again a completely other level that I feel like was pretty legendary. And then lastly, my pick here again, I think I have to agree with Olivia, and I don't know if maybe it's a hot take, but. I think I do have to agree that you have to think of Asama Singa on this list. You know, like if you're looking at some of these record lists, 200 meter outdoor record 1997, 200 meter indoor record 2048, and then he tied that 60 meter indoor record, which a lot of people thought would be really hard for anyone to ever even reach 6.57. So I think three records in one year is just absolutely insane. And then I think another thing to consider is, you know, we have, it's a world championship year. And he is someone that right now could compete for and potentially win a world championship title. Like he could be most certainly considered mm, in that final. Not saying I, win, but he could be in that final. You just said win though. <laughs> I said could, could potentially okay. win. Potentially. Okay. I'm not saying he's going all to. Right, all potential. Right, all right. If you're in a final, anyone could have the potential Thank to win. Thank you. So, yes. <laughs> he is with really? the best in the world right really? now. The best in the world. <laughs> really. He is among the best in the world. Sprinters. Yeah, so no, that's to right. consider him not an all-timer in high school, I think that would be a disservice. There's, it, no one's going to be here and say he's not an all-timer. I think the only, I think, um, I think uh, I will buck against that trend because we are in this rec uh, recency bias with him being right in front of us. And I do agree that his marks are are going down. They, they might be, you know, the, among the best ever, but I think sprinting is pretty tricky and complex in high school because Arian Knighton is not even in the discussion, but he did all of those amazing things as a high schooler. He got to the Olympics, the youngest male ever to do it. Are so, you saying Arian Knighton's not in conversation right now? Is that what you're saying? Y'all didn't put Arian Knighton on your top three list because he was a he, pro. Okay. Right? Yes. But I'm taught. That's why I mentioned like as a high schooler in the high school realm of things. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Records, high school performances, in the sprints is tricky because sprinters have more access to professional, um, you know, contracts than distance runners will have just comparably, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a great sprinter in high school, 17 or 18, you might get a contract early on and then your high school records are, are basically void after that because they're all pro. So that's kind of complex. Aaron Knighton to me had a better 200 meter career than Assam ever did, but Assam ran the hundred more. So obviously his hundred has been better. I think they're on equal ground, but that that to me cancels them out. Um, so I do think they're all they're both all timers, but the way we we talk about them is is kind of tricky. Now my my list will veer from y'all. I, I like to be the contrarian often here, and <laughs> this is no different. Uh, I have Jim Ryan uh, here as my top three um, out of Kansas. The miler for today's milers. I mean, he was the first to do it. He's the one that set the stage, created an arms race. Um, he ran sub four when at the time it wasn't really considered possible. Um, he clocked a best of 355.3, and he did so with less than ideal conditions with tracks and shoes and everything. He basically is the guy that set the precedent. And for me, that's why he kind of has to be up top above Alan Webb because. Um, not saying Alan Webb wouldn't be him without Jim Ryan, but without Jim Ryan, we wouldn't have the mile for what it is today, potentially. And, you know, looking at him, you know, Jerry, Jerry West is the NBA logo because at, at a very early, you know, time that, that leaks history, he, he was just, you know, a, a vision of, of the league. And Jim Ryan, if they had a logo for a high school track and field, he would be it. He would be the logo. So I'm going with Jim Ryan there. I'm also going with Ryan Krauser over Michael Carter. I don't um, object to his 81 foot throw, uh, but Ryan Krauser actually has thrown the second far the shot put of all time he ran. He, he threw 77 feet indoors. Um, and Krauser has more national records too. He has a discus outdoor national record from his senior in 2011 and an indoor shot put national record to uh, over 77 feet. Um, Michael Carter is on record but at saying Ryan was probably the only one 
that was even in contention to go after his record. But Ryan got injured his senior year, did not have the opportunity to go after that shot put mark. He only threw 72 and 65 in his final year. If he had a, maybe you know, a more healthy season, maybe that's different. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't hit 80, but he's probably closer to it. So I think Ryan, for me, is more versatile, and therefore he's number two on the list. We obviously know right now he's a world and Olympic champion and, and a record holder, so mm-hmm. he certainly hasn't you know, uh, rebuffed from his career since high school. So he's definitely proven himself. And then the third, I originally had Marcus Goodwin. I'm going to change it on the spot right now. Um, oh. I do like the 26-11 okay. long jump that he's, he's, he's marked. That That's a mark that I don't know if that will be touched anytime soon. But I will side with Mondo Duplantis. I'm just thinking Thank more you. and more and more and more <laughs> about it. I talked about Vashti a uh, lot last week being a unicorn mondo was that same unicorn and you just can't not solidify and verify you know like you know make a legacy out of those 19 foot vaults in high school it's just unreal talent that uh was um uh you know compiled in in, in his senior year in louisiana so mondo plant this is my third pick so jim ryan ryan krauser mondo to plant this for me i think we all have different lists yeah uh, it'll be an interesting conversation. We'll put something up on the site. We'll see if y'all agree with us. We'll put some polls up. Um, yeah. Fun times. Fun times. All right. So any lasting thoughts before we move on? You know, getting ready for Bermuda. You're going to get the island life coming up? Island life. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right. Get to show Ashley around. I'm excited. <laughs> That's right. Because they're there for the cross-country meet. So. <laughs> Good times. I'm excited. Yes, oh, it's going to awesome. be fun. All right. Well, stay tuned for more coverage on milesplit.com. All meet coverage, photos, videos, and more. This is our last show until a couple of weeks as we head into AU season on the 18th, I believe, is our next show. So thank you for watching. We'll be back with you in a couple of weeks. Take care.